And we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fourth segment, I'm going to bring the attention to a Villanova player named Mark Armstrong, who has just recently declared for the NBA draft. Now, you guys are probably wondering, like, who is this? And like, oh, why is this, like, an important topic of conversation? Well, the reason why it's important to me is because Mark Armstrong went to my high school. Like, I saw that man play basketball and, um, like, in person when before he was, like, this big basketball, like, this big college player that he is now. And seeing that he is now declaring for the NBA draft after, like, watching him play in high school is, like, astonishing. And it's just, like, yes, let's go. Like, this is something that he's dreamed of for the longest time. And it's, like, it's something that we all sort of expected to happen like everyone that graduated from that high school we all expected him to be an NBA star and now it's like he's finally like living up to that um to that dream of his and living up to the expectations that we all expected of him and it's like it's phenomenal so a little bit of background like with Mark Armstrong he went to high school in St. Peter's Prep um again same high school as me he leads our he is the our leading scorer in our entire program's history and this is impressive because he was he broke this record while having a covid year like he broke the scoring record while he had while we had a shortened season due to covid so imagine how many points he could have ended up having and imagine how many points he could have ended up leading by if he didn't have that covid year and i was there for that game where he ended up breaking um the scoring record for our for our uh, school and that was like that was a very very big moment obviously like I've seen him he is a phenomenal player and it's like he plays like I'll read the scouting reports but like he's ridiculous and he was also a part of the men's USA under 18 team and he helped lead that team to winning a gold medal so he is a gold medalist already and he's not even started his NBA career. And when you think about it like that, that is just ridiculous. Like, that is astonishing. The fact that he is already, like, a champion, a world champion, like, an Olympic champion is a very, very big deal. And it's something that really gets brushed off when talking about the NBA for some reason. Like, Olympic championships are, like, and Olympic gold medals, it's a ridiculous, it's a huge honor to have. And, like, the fact that he already has one and he got one as a high schooler is is amazing to me. Now, a little bit of his, um, a little bit overview of his stats. His stats, they aren't, like, they don't scream NBA caliber player. I'm, like, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, his first year on Villanova with the new coach because, like, he didn't end up going into the transfer pool. Unlike most um, college, uh, like, um, high schoolers who ended up using the transfer portal after declaring for Villanova because he declared for Villanova at around the same time that their coach, um, their very prestige head coach, decided to leave the program. And a lot of people thought he was going to enter the transfer portal or like decide, declare for another team, but he ended up staying with Villanova in that program, and he ended up averaging five points per game, shot 40% from the field and 24% from three. Now, in his second year, he ended up averaging eight points per game and 41 percent from the field and 28 percent from three so again while it doesn't seem like it's nba caliber like or first round pick caliber that doesn't mean that he's not going to get picked in the draft so i'm going to look at the scouting reports and like read off exactly like what these players think what these um scouts think of him and Armstrong, he's an extremely quick combo guard that has that was a solid piece off the bench for Villanova as a freshman. While he does lack height, he's a great athlete and is strong relative to his weight. What's evident about Armstrong is that he's tough and plays with an edge. He's got New Jersey flair, and his energy on the floor is contagious. Most players of Armstrong's size play below the rim, but he's quite the opposite. The Villanova guard is very bouncy and leverages his vertical and powerful pop to play above the rim often. When he's not dunking the ball, he has impressive body control and finishes well in traffic for an undersized guard. 
Armstrong has a great series of dribble moves he uses, with the crossover being his most frequent and effective option. The mid-range is where Armstrong is tough to defend. He's dangerous just inside the arc, manipulating his defenders with his ability to pull up with a jumper or take them to the rim. A legitimate self-creator, he has no problem getting to his spots and scoring. Armstrong also has a promising three-point stroke, but struggled in his first college season from that range. While his shot does have some dip in it, his fundament he's fundamentally sound and has good mechanics. That, along with the fantastic free throw shooting, gives us optimism that he will end up being a quality perimeter shooter. So, if you're going to want to compare him to like an NBA player, I feel like Russell Westbrook is probably like the best comparison in like in terms of offensive play style because like again, he's a relatively shorter guard or even Donovan Mitchell. Honestly, Donovan Mitchell or Russell Westbrook are a very good comparison because they're relatively small guards, but they do have that bounce to meet a lot of defenders at the rim while at the same time having a dangerous mid-range pull-up that keeps defenders on their toes, which is why I pr primarily like associated him with Westbrook because Westbrook in his MVP season and before that, he had a ridiculous mid-range shot and it was very, very consistent. So on top of the fact that he's able to finish around the rim, like Mark Armstrong, he can get up there. He is a ridiculous dunker for his height. And I even, even on my phone, I have a clip of him jumping over someone in um in a pickup game like he literally jumped over someone to dunk on them in a pickup game while wearing khaki pants like that is insane to me like and that's ridiculous how someone is that athletic now on the, an improving facilitator armstrong's ability to pass the ball and orchestrate the offense will be something he will need to really flash this year any player of his size has to do more than score to get drafted and on the defensive end, he is quick and pesky, but struggles in quite a few situations. He generates steals at a solid rate, but is also easily bullied by bigger offensive players. The former four-star recruit had the opportunity to play in front of NBA scouts almost every game last season with Cam Whitmore as a teammate. So, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, like his success with Team USA on the um, under-18 team, and I feel like that's also, like, going to add on to, like, his resume and will help him get drafted. So he's projected to be a second-round pick in the 2024 draft, which, again, isn't bad. And, again, there's still more to improve in his game, which I don't see why he can't improve when he's in the league. And, like, there's not much negative that's coming from the scouting report in, like, at least from this last scouting report. This scouting report was done like a while ago, but regardless, it's like, he's just that, he's just that good. Like in, in my opinion, he is that guy. And he, he was that guy on high school. And I really see, I don't see why he couldn't be that guy on an NBA team. So here's a little bit more, more draft notes coming in. He's tough, hard nosed guard who plays with an edge, brings it on both ends on the floor. He's not the biggest player and might not have ideal height, but is strong, tough, and bouncy, and can really play above the rim. Has a combo, a combo guard skill set, and will have to develop his playmaking at the NBA level, which is, honestly, that's something that, like, he's struggled with in high school as well. But primarily, I thought it was because, like, he, there weren't really that, he didn't really, like, there was no need for him to pass when he was on high school, because it's like... He, he was able to score on anyone regardless but that's going to be the aspect of his game that really needs like improvement if he wants to be a legitimate guard in the NBA it's his playmaking and his ability to like be a facilitator so just wanted to bring attention to that because it's like again from my high school and we're going to see him potentially get drafted in the same draft class as Bronny James if Bronny James gets drafted this year that's a big if but we'll see how that goes so that's, a, that's all I got for this fourth segment, and with that, that is the end of the entire show, so that's the end of this fourth segment. Thank you for tuning into the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review, 
It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. And as I said previously in the first two segments, remember to tip and donate to get your comments recognized. Use the link displayed below the ticker on every single show segment or the link in the description. That is gsmcpodcast.net. Really helps the show, makes the show much more interactive between myself and you guys. And again, that is it for the show. That's it for this fourth segment. Thank you guys once again for tuning in. I am your host, Nelson. And as always, take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go.